Erev Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And of course, things are continuing to break all throughout the world. It seems that we are on a brink of a world war. North Korea warning of a nuclear attack on the U.S. at any sign of aggression. Now, the question really is, is whether or not they can deliver on such attack without it being knocked down by U.S. air defense systems. Uh, and that still remains to be seen. We do know that North Korea has been able to develop uh, an intercontinental ballistic missile there, but whether or not it can do re-entry or not uh, still remains to be seen. There are also indications that North Korea may have nuclear capabilities on two of its satellites that could be detonated over the U.S., uh, causing an EMP uh, attack that would virtually cripple the nation. Now, whether or not all this is true or not, don't really know. Now, we reported yesterday that the United States and China have been working for quite some time on taking out North Korea, something that I had never anticipated before after seeing the Donfang uh, 41 uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles being moved into the northeastern province of China, not thinking it for a moment that this could be for North Korea. But in fact, that's exactly what it is. And of course, President Trump is trying to play that down just a bit, saying that if China's not with them, they'll go at it alone. Well, China's definitely with them, and they've moved 150,000 soldiers there on the northern border of North Korea. So it seems that they're very much on board with this, and that's what's concerned me about this prophecy over in Daniel. Uh, still could be China. I'm not saying that it's not, but it still kind of makes me wonder if that tidings out of the uh, north and uh, from the north and, and from the east is not actually speaking about North Korea because he goes to make away many, this one that goes to take out all the people there in those regions. Of course, out of the north being Russia there inside of Syria and out of the east being uh, Korea, uh, North Korea that is. Now, let's kind of take a look at some serious things that are going on. We're going to jump back here to North Korea here in just a few minutes here. Uh, but I did want to first let you know that North Korea is threatening to use nuclear weapons on the United States, which all the more is going to make President Trump definitely launch the invasion on this country here. Uh, but uh, this is, we have several different Russian sources we're going to be sharing with you as well as uh, uh, English sources. But on rbc.ru, Putin spoke about the preparation of the Himatak in several regions of Syria. Moscow uh, has information on pre uh, preparing a chemical attack like the one that occurred in Idlib in other parts of Syria, including the capital of Damascus, said President Vladimir Putin. So Russia is actually uh, realizing with their own intel that the United States, uh, their rebel, their U.S.-backed rebels there are planning more chemical attacks and only to blame this on President Bashar al-Assad. Now, as we have reported here on Israeli News Live, it's clearly not that the, the President of the United States was striking Syria uh, just as a random act over a chemical attack, but the evidence of building up the forces, getting them ready to enter in, into Syria, has been ongoing for months, all the way back when President Barack Hussein Obama was in power. Uh, so President Trump is only carrying out more of the of the new world order agenda that's been planned for a long, long time. Um, and something too, friends, I got, I really got to share with you that I think is very important. Um, and this is kind of like a side note, but it's also, <clears throat> excuse me, a reality. And that is, you cannot help but think about the mark of the beast. I think of this often from the book of Revelation when it talks about the uh, the mark of the beast that would come where a man cannot buy or sell, saving he has the mark, or not just the mark, the number of his name uh, is another issue there. You can have his name or the number of his name or the mark itself in your forehead, forehead or in your hand. Uh, and of course, the other ones has nothing to do with a, with a mark on the body at all. It's just having the name or the number of his name. But the whole idea is that you can't buy or sell saving you take this mark, saving you take this identity of a new world order, no doubt is what it has a lot to do with. But we're seeing this already in uh, dealing with nations right now, that if a nation doesn't go along with the uh, new world order agenda, the United Nations agenda there, you don't get to buy or sell. They slap the sanctions on you, and, and, and if you really get out of line, they'll put more sanctions on you, and um, this is just exactly what goes on. Or 
worse yet, they'll take and come and bomb your country and destroy everybody in the nation and set it up with a whole new government. Really, you can't buy or sell unless you go along with the New World Order plan. So just thought I'd throw that in there just to think about because if it's happening on a global scale against nations, wait till it comes down to an individual scale where unless you go along with the program, you're not going to buy or sell. You're not going to conduct business unless you're in tune with what the program is all about that they have set up for you. Uh, moving right along though, Rex Tillerson to Russia, you're either with us or Assad. He gave out a plain ultimatum before uh, leaving the G7 summit there in Italy there and heading over to Russia. He is now in Moscow now meeting with Sergey Lavrov. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what time that meeting is scheduled for. I'm sure it's probably tomorrow at this point here. At least that would be my thought. Uh, but uh, he was real quick to say about Russia that they're either with us or they're with Assad. That's like telling you, giving you the ultimatum. And again, it reminds me of a mark of the beast. You either do what we say or else you're going to pay. One way or the other. You're either with us or you're against us. And that puts Russia in a very small box because that puts him down, as Rex Tillerson said, I, with, you know, all he has for his allies right now are Iran and Hezbollah. Seems like Russia doesn't have China as an ally anymore. And that's pretty obvious since China's been working with the United States and he definitely doesn't have Turkey on his side either. So President uh, Putin is very much isolated in this case. And I have to tell you, I would much rather see him stand up against, uh, uh, in this case here. I, I hate to see the underdog just be defeated like this. Uh, and it looks like that's exactly what he's going to do. Uh, according to uh, Lenta.ru, uh, the Russian foreign ministry responded to the U.S. Secretary's uh, ultimatum. And uh, Ms. Maria Zakharova, who is the spokesperson for the Russian Federation, um, she came out and she said, I view uh, the word of Tillerson as a political statement, as a muscle game before the start of negotiations. This is quite in line with Washington's approach, the diplomat said. Earlier Tuesday, U.S. Secretary of State said that Russia must make a choice between the U.S. And, and, and sane countries on the one hand and Iran grouping Hezbollah and the regime of, of Syria, the Syrian president uh, Bashar al-Assad on the other. The deputy chairman of the Federation Council Committee on the International Affairs, Andrei Klamov, suggested that Tillerson made that statement because it is, it is not enough to understand the issue if he knows the real situation is and says, then is very dangerous uh, symptom, says the MP there. Well, I don't think that uh, I don't think that uh, Secretary of State Tillerson. I don't think it's an issue of him not knowing the situation inside of Syria. I, the U.S. very well knows that Bashar al-Assad had no chemical weapons and that Bashar al-Assad never used chemical weapons. I think they know good and well what was really done. This was all a diversion. And, um, and that's exactly the way it's been played out. Here's another one that I thought interesting. Sarah Abdallah, she shared this on uh, her Twitter account, and I thought it was very interesting there. She also, I believe, lives in Syria. Listen to what uh, uh, Sean Spicer says. The, uh, he's there, he's the spokesperson there, for, uh, there in, uh, for the White House. Listen to what he has to say here in this comment here. The goal for both of them, the goal for the United States is twofold. As I've stated, it's one, to make sure that we destabilize Syria. Well, he does try to correct that statement, but I think the first statement is really what he meant was to destabilize Syria. Um, he does take, though, and corrects his statement right after he says that, but I think that's exactly what Washington's intent really uh, is. Another thing that caught my attention too is Eric Trump says the Syrian strike was swayed by heartbroken Ivanka. Uh, Donald Trump's decision to bomb Syria was influenced by his daughter Ivanka being heartbroken and outraged at the country's alleged chemical uh, weapons attack on the president's son. The president's son told a British newspaper. The president launched 59 cruise missiles at a Syrian government air base. Um, he alleged was involved in the chemical weapons attack that killed dozens of civilians last week. Trump's 33-year-old son, um, Eric, told the Daily Telegraph on Monday that the strike was influenced in part by Ivanka, 
uh, who he said was heartbroken and outraged at the chemical attack. All right, now watch what he says here though. Ivanka is a mother of three kids and she has, uh, she has influenced, Eric Trump said, speaking with the newspaper Trump uh, Turnberry at the golf resort in Ayrshire, Scotland. I'm sure she said, listen, uh, this is horrible stuff. My father will act in times like that. Trump himself was deeply affected by the pictures of children being sprayed down by the hoses to keep their skin from burning, according to his son. It is horrible. These guys are savages, and I'm glad he responded the way he responded. He described the president as a great thinker, particularly not impulsive, and added, I'm proud uh, he took that action, and believe me, he thinks things through. Asked about Russia's threat of military escalation following the strike, Eric Trump told the Telegraph his father would be uh, would, would not be intimidated. Uh, there was another part in here somewhere, and I didn't see it here, but I know where he talks about the white helmets. Our white helmets is something that he had mentioned, uh, that they saw that, and that's what was really troubling. In fact, that's what you see here. I think this is the video itself. Let me just turn down the volume here as we kind of go through this real quick there, though. But um, the white helmets, of course, is what they're referring to, the video that they saw washing off these victims here. Uh, but the problem with the video is, is that one drop of that sarin gas would actually kill a human, a, a full-grown man, a human being. And for them to be washing off these victims with, uh, with a hose and handling them with their bare hands lets us know that these, this is not uh, sarin gas victims here. Uh, at this point here, but it just doesn't make sense. You have to understand if it's sarin gas, they have to be completely protected themselves. And of course it is the white helmets showing all the footage here. So it's very questionable to begin with when we see this type of uh, information coming out. And so, you know, even if President Trump acted based on this type of information, not knowing the fact, someone should have uh, alerted him that if it was really sarin gas, these people would be dropping dead as well uh, for treating them being totally unprotected. Uh, also, President Putin, what will Putin uh, uh, answer? Uh, this is on the uh, svpressa.ru. He says here that the American strike on Syria changes the situation not only on the world stage, but also in Russia. As for the states, it is not difficult to understand. Tomahawks were, uh, were not the answer to the mythical chemical threat, but the criticism of Trump in the United States, both the personal and verbal attacks, uh, perhaps President's domestic political initiatives, as well as the attacks on the liberal uh, establishment, a strong role on Trump does not diminish, according to more and more sophisticated forms and gradually driving the owner in the White House uh, into a dead end. Um, actually, you know, I forget exactly why I brought this article in. I'll have to drop it for now. I apologize for that. I know there was something important I wanted to share with you there and I just forgot exactly what that was. Uh, this one here, the Duran, is, oh, though this article is very interesting here. They actually bring up in the Duran, uh, they question the timing of uh, Senator John McCain's visit to Syria. Both times there were secret, unannounced visits. He goes into Lebanon, sneaks over into Syria, and always in both cases, in 2013 and of course and now in 2017, uh, right after his visit, normally a month after his visit, then we have the chemical attacks. Is it coincidence or what? Well, don't really know, but it is kind of odd that in both cases he's always there a month before a chemical attack. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? Uh, also breaking, trilateral meeting set to take place between Syria, Russian, and Iranian foreign ministers in Moscow very soon. That kind of lets me know that Russia is more than likely willing to back up President Bashar al-Assad if there is another strike by the Western uh, coalition, uh, even though the entire world is against them. And I don't know, I'm, I'm really beginning to wonder if President Putin may not realize that this is really putting Russia in a very awkward position that perhaps he's going to suggest for President Bashar al-Assad to step down. Again, as I said the other day, you know, for his sake and for his family's sake, it might be the better choice to be made. But the problem with that is if he steps down, then he has deserted his people that have been fighting for so long in this civil war um, and they would just be massacred. 
there would be no peaceful takeover of power. You're talking about jihadists that behead children that the United States has been backing. Al Nusra, Al Qaeda, ISIS members, Free Syrian Army. These guys are all one and the same. And they have been very much involved in some of the worst atrocities in the war you could ever imagine. All kinds of children have been murdered at the hands of these people here. And to think that if Bashar al-Assad were to step down and were to take the easy way out, that would put his people in harm's way as well. Because these uh, ruthless individuals would just murder people by the tens of thousands that were, uh, you know, because they have supported President Bashar al-Assad the entire time. Uh, so it would put them at great risk. But there again, you know, we don't know exactly why they're going to be meeting. I would say that they're meeting because they're willing to fight back. Um, but as I've shared with you the other day, from a biblical standpoint, if the prophecies are accurate, what we're seeing there, they're not going to win. Uh, Russia will be defeated in this battle here. As much as I would like to think differently, and I don't say that in any disrespect towards my own country, America, but I do believe that what America is doing when it comes to President Bashar al-Assad in Syria, I believe it is wrong flat out wrong from the very beginning. Uh, moving on as well, South Front News is reporting that uh, Trump slams North Korea, says the U.S. is ready to solve the problem. Um, the, he actually tweeted that out. North Korea is looking for trouble. If China decides to help, that would be great. If not, we will solve the problem without them, USA, says the President of the United States. He says, uh, um, U.S. China agree on North Korea nuclear threat, Tillerson says. I think even China is beginning to recognize that this presents a threat to even China's interests, Tillerson uh, said during an interview on CBS Face the Nations program. Well, I hate to tell you, CBS, but um, China's been in this all along with the United States preparing an attack on North Korea. Now, they may have uh, stated maybe privately with the U.S. that they have some concerns about going ahead and doing this attack on North Korea. Uh, but, uh, but China has definitely been getting ready by moving their Donfeng uh, uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles there into the northern province of China, which is on the northern border of North Korea. All their troops, they've been moving this all along now for months now. And we reported the movement of the def, uh, uh, Donfeng missiles there that were moved up there uh, back months ago there. But I didn't realize at that time that this was because they were working with the United States. So China's not had Russia's back as much as I thought they would. Um, another thing here as well, Reuters uh, saying that North Korean ships head home after China orders coal returned. Uh, so now the blockade has, has come. This is where I was talking about that mark of the beast. You can't buy or sell unless you go along with the New World Order. See, China's not willing to give up all the money they've been making off of this uh, world scene with the United States and with other nations around the world. China has really become a modern country and has been developing very rapidly. And I think this is why you don't see China going along with Russia as much as some people might, thought, might have thought that they would have, even though it is a communist nation. You got to remember the Pope of Rome has really been working very diligently in the background with China in trying to get those relations, diplomatic relations resolved with China and the Vatican as well. And believe me, that has to be resolved before... Uh, uh, China can get in the fully good favor and have all the benefits that they're wanting to have. Uh, so right now they're clamping down on North Korea and you can't buy or sell. Ship all the coal back to North Korea. We don't need your coal. We'll get it from Russia or somebody else. So interesting how this ends up working out, right? And Russia is also kind of doing uh, a little maneuver here that I think is kind of like, you know, um, shaking a fist in the United States' face. The Pacific Fleet flagship Bryag. Uh, arrives at South Korean port Pusan. Uh, the flagship of Russia's Pacific Fleet, uh, Varyak, arrived at the shores of Korea. The warship entered the port of uh, Pusan earlier uh, than the USS Carl Vinson, which the U.S. turned to South Korea at the time when she was traveling to Australia. U.S. President Donald Trump ordered the USS Vinson aircraft carrier strike group to the North Korean and, and harbor at the Korean Peninsula in the western part of the Pacific Ocean. The military was instructed to be prepared for an attack. Uh, kind of interesting though to see that the uh, Russia actually s sends one of their own attack ships right down there to South Korea. I don't know if they're just gonna kind of watch over what goes on there or what, but it was kind of interesting to see that. 
I guess uh, if for some reason they feel like that the U.S. is going to make a strike on Russia while they're there, Russia wants to be prepared to be able to respond to any such threats. I'm not, I don't think that Russia thinks so that the U.S. would be making a strike on their country from North Korea, but it is clear that they're definitely wanting to take out uh, the North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un. And of course, you know, this is an old article right here. Uh, it's been, I don't know exactly the exact date on it, but I thought it'd be interesting just to bring this up to you. Putin is against Kim Jong-un. Uh, North Korea is building up its fleet and Russia is calling for peace talks. But unfortunately, Kim Jong-un is just was not listening to Russia, China, or anybody else. Uh, he has been very set, very bent on building up a nuclear weapons program. Uh, hoping that this would be more of a leverage tool for him and getting more out of uh, the West and other countries around the world, maybe to even get in his way of thinking respect by world leaders. But unfortunately, because of these nuclear weapons, the United States is fixing to act very aggressively. I'm just concerned that we may turn this in, this whole charade into a third world war, especially with Syria, North Korea, and, if, you know, I, I know that North Korea would not be that big of an issue for the United States at this point here, uh, but you just never know which way this could end up going. Uh, one last thing I wanted to bring up to you guys uh, in our news here broadcast. This was very troubling to me. Uh, BBC News was covering this called Charlie Guard Case. Doctors can withdraw baby's life support. This is an eight-month-old baby. Uh, he has a rare disease has left him unable to cry and made him deaf. Um, doctors can withdraw life support from a sick baby with a rare genetic condition against his parents' wishes, a high court judge has ruled. Now, from what I understand about this case here, the family of this little baby here that is suffering with this uh, disease here, which is pictured right here when the baby was born, um, uh, they raised enough money, I think over a million British pounds, to be able to take their child to the United States for an alternative treatment that might very well could save this child's life and turn this child around. And the sad thing is, is that the court, the high court overruled, would not allow them to take their baby to get this alternative treatment. When they've raised the money to do it, and now a judge can override parents' decisions for the life of their own child and can just pull the plug on this baby? That's just downright out murder. I mean, that judge is guilty of murder. Mr. Justice Francis said uh, he made the decision with the heaviest of hearts, but with complete conviction that it was the correct decision for the child. I think his parents should make that decision, especially when they're trying to save a life and not take a life, not a murder a life. And I have to just call it like it is. My heart goes out to this family here. It's hard enough for them uh, going through what they've gone through with their baby, but that's their baby, and they're trying to save the baby's life. What, what, is, what, what, what is the judge trying to do? Save the country some money? Is that what it is? I mean, this is despicable. It is absolutely despicable. Uh, Mrs. Yates and Mr. Uh, Gard of Bedfont, West London, had told the family division of the high court they wanted to give their baby one chance of life. Mr. Gard was shaking and visibly very upset as he waited for the judgment. BBC News correspondent Helena Lee, uh, who was in the court, said when the judge ruled the treatment, uh, the treatment could be withdrawn, he shouted no. And both he and Mrs. Yates broke down in tears. Their, uh, solicitor Laura Hobby Hampshire said they were devastated by the decision and could not understand why the judge had not at least given the Charlie the chance of treatment. The couple had set up a, a, a crowdfunding campaign to fund the treatment ab abroad, which was raised more than 1.25, uh, I'm assuming that's million pounds is what that is. Uh, so they had sufficient ability to do it and then the judge to deny them this last ditch effort. That is totally wrong. I, I just I believe that the judge is guilty of murder if this child dies. That's just my opinion on it. And I just I share that with you uh, in closing as well. NATO instructors are continuing to deploy to Donbass to promote uh, frat fratricide. Uh, in other words, what they're doing is they're sending in all kinds of mercenaries and everything else practicing on killing people over in Donbass. Uh, it's really a horrendous crime that NATO is doing right now. Uh, the Ukraine Armed Forces over the past few days 
fired across the territory of Republic, 40 pieces of ammunition. This was reported today by the official representatives of the People's Militia of the Republic, Lieutenant uh, Colonel Andre uh, Mar uh, excuse me, Maroka Koch, uh, at a briefing of the Luhansk Information Center. He noted that the situation of the zone of responsibility of the LPR People's Militia remains intense. Over the past few days, the enemy broke the ceasefire regime four times. But here's what's really weird, though. What's happening, though, they're bringing in mercenaries. They're bringing in uh, hired hands just to practice on killing people there in Donbass. Uh, there was a group of women that came in that were being uh, using, used as snipers to give them training there. There are also private military companies that kill civilians for money, added the lieutenant colonel. Earlier, uh, Mar uh, Morocco uh, reported that the UAF threw to the contact line a group of female snipers from the Baltic countries and Poland. Uh, also, he stated the Ukrainian commander transferred to the zone of the so-called ATO several hundreds of mercenaries from Canada, the Baltics, Poland, Georgia. In addition to Marco noted that the mercenaries trained the UA UAF military personnel in sabotage and reconnaissance, uh, mind subversive activities and tactics of conducting combat in urban conditions. In a, I mean, that's just despicable that I, I say NATO but because the thing is, it's the NATO member countries that are sending in their mercenaries, what, for, for, for what is this, a uh, crapshoot or something, to take in, uh, or target practice, that's the wrong word, crapshoot, I didn't mean it like that there, but, uh, but, you know, for target practice, you're just coming over there to target practice on the civilians of Donbass, you know, just get as close as you can and see how many people you can kill. This is just absolutely insane what's going on against the people of Donbass there. Minsk agreements mean absolutely nothing to, not only just to Ukraine and Kiev's government, it means nothing to the NATO members that have backed up Petro Poroshenko and his bunch of thugs that are running the government in Ukraine. It is a crime against humanity what's going on. I have a feeling that they got all these people over here training because they're getting ready to have a war with Russia. They know that if they get involved uh, with striking uh, Syria and Russia doesn't back off, then what they're going to end up doing is they're going to end up in a war with Russia. And if it ends up in Syria, it's going to end up in Europe as well. So I, I think this is what this is all about. Probably if Russia strikes, uh, excuse me, if, if the United States strikes again in Syria and Russia retaliates, it could end up being that uh, they try to take out Kal Kaliningrad because of the fact that Russia has nuclear weapons there. And that would be a threat uh, to the NATO forces that are also fighting in the region in, inside of uh, uh, Syria, all in those areas there. I'm Stephen Benoom. Apologize, my voice a little bit messed up here with some severe sinus issue I've been dealing with there. But uh, uh, we are covering more and more. A uh, lot of things too. I might mention to you as well. Uh, Yana's channel, Rise Up, Children of God. I'll try to remember to put the link this time in the description below. She's doing a lot of interviews, a lot of interviews that are very interesting. And in fact, if you know anyone that is suffering from autism, any child that has ever had autism and you would like to know how to cure autism, especially if it's caught at an early enough stage, uh, Jan will be interviewing a doctor in Slovakia that has learned the way to cure autism. You won't want to miss that. That'll air on her channel. It won't be airing here on Israeli News Live. We may end up airing a portion of that interview later, uh, but I'm sure there's been many people that could be benefited from that. Uh, so she does a lot of interviews like that, a lot of little inside things as well, sometimes things that we have in our family here that goes on, she shares on her channel that we that you don't get here. Um, and also on, on Danoon Institute, uh, my teaching channel there, I am fixing to release a very powerful video. Um, I know it's going to be a real blessing. I'll be doing teaching on also on the Passover. I'm going into the issue too about the Passover lamb that they sacrificed recently in Israel. I'm not for a sacrifice uh, system at all, and neither were the prophets. So we'll be talking about that as well, sharing some insights on that. But I really want to uh, share something with you. I've told you all along, why did Yeshua say in the book of Revelations to John, I counsel of you to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Well, you know, I've been wanting to bring this message out for a long time, and it, I have to really thank my sister Jennifer uh, who contacts me from time to time because the Lord just wouldn't let me speak on it as of yet. And she shared with me some very interesting information that just helped corroborate more 
uh, of that message that I'm wanting to share. That'll be coming out this week on Danoon Institute. So, and I haven't spoken in a long time over there. So people are probably about ready to string me up for not spending more time in teaching there. So I will be getting back over there. I'll put that link in there as well in case you like to follow the teachings that I do because from now on that's pretty much where they'll be other than uh, a little bit of the prophetic sides that we throw in the news. I'm Stephen Benet with the Great News Live.